Okay, on to question four. And please, if anyone needs me to repeat the question, let me know. Happy to do it. In a time of continually constrained resources, sounds like a movie trailer. <laughs> I could, that could be a good second job for me. Uh, I hope more sinister. Uh, in a time of continually constrained resources, what should be the essential purpose of the Office of Cultural Affairs? And do you think the funds currently allocated to the OCA would be put to better use by increasing the arts grants pool and distributing those dollars to community organizations? Just two parts of it. I think that's a really uh, great question because I think this is a question that is going to challenge us next year as we look to fund various uh, arts programs throughout our city. Uh, I, I think that, well, I believe that the Office of Cultural Affairs is doing a fantastic job of really bringing communities together, showcasing various arts throughout our city from different youth groups, um, arts group, and throughout. And so my uh, pledge to you as mayor is to continue to fund the Office of Cultural Affairs. If we have more funding, we would definitely be able to fund more, increase their funding each year so that they can continue to do the outstanding work that they do. And I think that it's so great for a city to have one office that can connect so many different uh, facets of our community. I remember working at different uh, arts events in the Vietnamese American community, and every time we go down there, and the staff is just incredibly kind and, and very cordial. And it's just so nice to see that kind of customer service uh, from this office. And so our budget is not as bad as people think. We actually have a 1.1 surplus <laughs> next year. Well, you know, we don't have a deficit. Um, obviously, a lot of the work uh, that has derived from that uh, came from the Measure B, the pension reform measure that most of you supported uh, in 2012. So we're reaping a lot of financial benefits now. And if we can actually use some of those uh, financial benefits and actually allocate and make our arts and cultural environment more uh, vibrant, that is something that I look forward to doing. Okay. The premise behind the question is in past budgets, we had uh, used uh, transit occupancy tax, hotel tax money to fund OCA. And then, or OCA was funded by the general fund, and then we shifted a little bit from the hotel tax to fund the OCA people. Um, so for where I see OCA today, I don't see expanding it. I see leave it where it is as far as the personnel today. Any increment that grows above, then that and give that to the art groups. But you do need people in the Office of Cultural Affairs to manage the races that go through the neighborhoods, to manage the public art process, so we don't have another crisis quality again. <laughs> and and I recently used OCA for a project in my district. Last year, I allocated twenty thousand dollars on my office budget. I run a surplus every year because I don't have a secretary, so I save you money. Uh, and I took that twenty thousand dollars and I wanted to beautify a part of uh, my district. So if you know Lincoln Avenue, as it passes under Highway Two Hundred and Eighty, there's several freeway columns there. So if you go out there today, you'll see people that are painting. It took us about ten months to get the Caltrans permit. Uh, but they're painting each column of different colors, uh, set up by an artist who looked at the historical uh, adobe that was next door and took some uh, uh, parts of the different flags and the heritage of the uh, settlers that came. And those are being painted now and they'll be graffiti coated. Uh, for me, it's an inexpensive way, in, in terms of all the other numbers you hear in government, of making an area look beautiful. For me, it started with Art Box. Art box. I used my excess campaign funds from my city council campaign to fund several of those boxes and I've gotten other people in the community to fund them as well because that's an inexpensive way of beautifying a city and I think once this project's done on Monday, if you go under Lincoln and 280, you'll see it all lit up. So I think those are the things that we need to look at, but as far as the cultural affairs budget, keep that staff where it is as, uh, in, as revenues increase, give it out to the arts communities based on the performance-based standards that we have in place. Thank you. Yes, I have no intention of uh, uh, limiting or, or uh, cannibalizing uh, OCA. I think when it comes to art, especially public art projects, my experience over eight years, and maybe it says something about me, is it's one of the areas that's most difficult uh, to play any kind of an arbiter role uh, or intermediate role or mediation role. Uh, the council
council member and the community really um, is, has an opportunity to, to be the ones to make a call to action and say this is what's needed here in this park, in this corner, in this location, um, but to try to get into make calling, uh, making the call on uh, a subjective thing like art and the beauty of art and even things as simple as what colors things should be is, is very, very difficult uh, for a single political person uh, to do, or even a city council for that matter. Uh, certainly a mayor, um, uh, I as mayor do not want to get uh, into the middle of a situation where uh, I'm trying to make a call uh, as to what's the best thing for the city of San Jose in terms of a particular piece of art or a commissioned piece of art or who should be commissioned to do that art. Um, so we need uh, independence in that regard. Uh, I believe that we're on a rising tide economically. I, I hope during this campaign uh, that we're not getting bogged down on how things have been in the deepest recession since the 1930s. We need to remember that property tax is increasing, probably by double digits this year. Sales tax is going to be increasing. And we need to, uh, to not give up anything that we're accustomed to having in this community, especially in the arts community. In terms of the primary function of OCA, um, I think a critical function is that they got to get City Hall out of the way. And uh, and for those of you who have ever worked with Tanny Turnip Seed or Carrie Adams Happer, uh, I know there's always, it's easy to criticize bureaucracies, but these folks work incredibly hard when you've got to get a festival or an event uh, or anything to happen in this city and you've got to push to get permits to police and fire and public works and everyone else. Uh, you really need an advocate. And Tammy Turnipsey is an incredible advocate, as is Carrie. And, uh, and I know there's a lot of griping about the fact that OCA swallows some TOT money and so forth, but uh, I shudder to consider what the consequences would be if we didn't have that staff pushing with us to make things happen. Uh, I also think that OCA is valuable to help us leverage outside grants. Uh, I mean, we've been hearing this in the last year. MAPA got an incredible uh, grant from Art Place, obviously, due to uh, great work uh, by Angie and their team, as well as uh, past grants from Knight Foundation. We're chasing some a pretty significant grant now from the Levitt Foundation. And really, although independent organizations have a lot to do with that effort, uh, OCA is there, and they're a critical partner in that effort, and I think Angie and others will tell you that. Uh, so that's critically important. I'd say the last thing we need OCA for is to keep the council out of it. Uh, we, I think Supervisor Cortese referred to this. We really don't want elected officials making decisions about what statute goes where or uh, how to paint this or that. Uh, it really should not be in our hands. And to keep it out of politics, it's important to have a professional staff who can work with the community effectively. Uh, I know there's a lot of criticism from some folks in the arts community, particularly smaller courts organizations, about how they may feel left out in various ways. I intend to be very inclusive as mayor, uh, but we do need our OCA. I think OCA does a tremendous job. I think the question is, is really about the TOT money and would we consider uh, the million dollars, about 25% of it now is funds OCA, would we consider putting that back in a general fund? Would we actually do that? You know, as has been said, I think the economy is improving and Nonprofit art uh, groups generate $122 million in economic output. That doesn't even include the for-profit groups. That's a tremendous uh, investment in economic boost to, to our community, um, aside from all the wonderful art benefits. As mayor, I would consider a portion of that coming back to the general fund to allow more money for the arts groups. Because I think that what, what is happening is, is generating a tremendous input a tremendous economic benefit for the city. I think we have to analyze that, but I certainly uh, would be open to that. And, and another thing I want to say about OCA is, is the fact that they have created programs that are helping art groups be better businesses. And I think that's very, very important for artists because many times uh, the, the art comes first and the business skills um, it d don't always follow, and that's very important so that artists can also uh, be good stewards of their resources. So I really appreciate those programs that OCA has, has led on and uh, yes, I think we need to find more ways to uh, increase your potential to get grants and continue to do your good work.
Thank you.